Today we're going to talk about leadership and preaching in the context of the church with John Curry. Hello, welcome to Clarity and Brevity. Today I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. John Curry at Westminster Theological Seminary. He is professor of pastoral theology, and we're going to talk about this book right here, The Pastor as Leader, Principles and Practices for Connecting Preaching and Leadership, which is recently published by Crossway. So John, welcome to Clarity and Brevity. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. So tell us about this book. Why did you write this book? Well, I've always had an interest in leadership. Um, and the Lord called me to be a pastor. And um, what I learned as I was growing through pastoral ministry was that there, there seemed to be this dichotomy between preaching and leadership. So when I started in pastoral ministry, I was in a particular denomination and tradition where uh, the pastors were good speakers um, and they were good managers, maybe good kind of CEO figures, but there wasn't with rare exceptions, there wasn't a lot of theological depth and we weren't really committed to expository preaching. Well, as I preached my way through the word, uh, my theology began to reform. And so as I reformed, um, I started to move into the confessional and theological tradition that we're in. And that brought me into reformed churches. And then I began to realize while there was a commitment to uh, sound theology and pastors were to be theologians, which I think is right and try to make that point in the book, that sometimes, perhaps oftentimes, uh, there was a lack of understanding or um, you weren't seeing much transformation and how to take the information that we were communicating and turn that into transformation for the congregation. In their lives. In, in their lives, but then in, in, in the congregation as a whole. Um, so that we had this great teaching, but not necessarily leading the church forward into maturity and into mission that Christ had given to it. And I thought, this can't be right. It can't be that you've got to be a leader or a preacher, particularly given the convictions that the preaching of the Word of God is primary. It has pride of place in the worship of the church, the life of the church, and the mission of the church. And so I thought, there's, is it right that we're not seeing that preached word translate into the life of the church and the mission of the church in a way that's transformative? And so I began to study it and find out how it is that, that Christ leads the church through the word preached. And then can we equip pastors to see themselves as preachers, therefore leaders, and then are there practices that flow out of that? So that's kind of what was behind the uh, developing the book. Uh, so maybe walk us through some of those practices, some of those principles that you talk yeah. about more fully in the book. Well, first of all, I think one of the principles is that a pastor needs to understand that as a preacher, he is a leader. Uh, and I ground that in the fact that uh, Christ leads his church through his word preached. And that wasn't true only of his ministry and his estate of humiliation, but also in his estate of exaltation. Explain what those mean, what those two estates mean. So Christ in his uh, ministry while on earth is a state of humiliation. And then after his death and resurrection, exalted to the right hand of the Father, his state of exaltation. And still, still active, still working in still the church. Still active and working, particularly by his spirit in the church. And so in places like um, Romans chapter 10 and then Ephesians chapter 2, and I think at the end uh, of uh, in Acts chapter 26, we have these statements where the apostle uh, indicates to us that in the preached word, it's actually Christ who preaches still. In fact, uh, Thomas Goodwin has this great statement uh, when he's um, uh, commenting on Hebrews, see that you do not refuse to listen to him who speaks, present tense, and Goodwin puts it, he says, Christ has his pulpit in heaven even to this day. And so I think that that's actually part of the Reformed tradition, that the preaching of the Word of God is the Word of God. So uh, as a preacher, if you are uh, set apart by Christ to steward his Word, then as you preach the Word faithfully, Christ is preaching to his congregation. And so I, I rooted uh, the idea of the preacher as a leader in the fact that as an officer of Christ, appointed by Christ, and as we'll tease out in the book, anointed with the Spirit of Christ, 
as you preach the word of Christ, it's actually Jesus who leads his church forward. That's Christ leads his church through the word preached. So if that's true, one of the first principles then is for the preacher to realize that preaching is an act of leadership. Now, we have to be careful there. What we're not saying is we take a bunch of um, worldly or fleshly concepts of leadership and bolt those onto preaching. Matter of fact, I argue against that. I think what we have to understand is that preaching, Christ-centered exposition of the whole counsel of God is leadership. So therefore, what are the implications for leadership that flow out of that? That's one principle. I think the other principle, maybe a couple of others that might be of interest, are that when we talk about leadership, you often talk about vision and strategy, and you hear that in leadership literature. And sometimes what that means when it's translated into the church is that um, what you have to do, you actually preach the word, and that's doctrine, and it's truth, and it's discipleship. But when it comes to the vision of the church or the strategy of the church, you have to get that from somewhere else. And somehow you have to kind of bolt that onto your preaching. Well, I don't think that's true. I think because the Word of God is the Word of the risen Christ, and because, as I argue in the book, it's through the preaching of the Word that Christ inaugurated His kingdom, and now through the preaching of the Word, as He sits at the right hand of the Father, that He extends His kingdom, the Bible's full of eschatological vision. The Bible's full of kingdom vision. And the preacher's job as he exposits the word, is to unearth that vision that's already in the text and make that clear, concrete, and compelling in the context in which God has appointed him to preach. So one principle is the vision actually comes from the word. Strategy also comes from the word. Uh, I interpret strategy in church leadership as the definition and the deployment of biblical priorities for church health. And so what you're doing is you're unearthing how has God prescribed what we should do to get to that biblical vision? And what does that look like here, where God has placed this? So I think some of the principles, Brandon, are the preacher sees himself as a leader and that the, some core functions of leadership, catching and communicating vision and developing and deploying strategy, are actually in the text. And your job as a preacher is to get them out of the text and show people how they land in your context. And so you're prioritizing the Word of God. What role is there for some of the, let's say, non-biblical, maybe common grace insights yeah. uh, or more secular literature on leadership and vision and all those sorts of things? How does that interface with the priority of the Word? Yeah, well, one of the things I do in my class here is teach. Uh, I have a lecture on uh, what I call on reading leadership. And um, I think there's a couple of ways that you can approach uh, that topic. Uh, one is... Uh, I've just alluded to is that we actually, um, what we do is we preach uh, doctrine and theology, but when it comes to how the church should operate, we have to go get that from somewhere else. So that the what can happen if we do that is that we, we confess the scriptures formally to be the authority and sufficient, but it doesn't function as, as, uh, as sufficient for our authority. So the church has got a formal confession that the church that the scriptures are authoritative, but it doesn't function in our ministry as authoritative. And so what we, we do then is we go and find other sources that we think make the church actually operate. And and when we do that, we become when it comes to the operation of the church or the leadership of the church, we become pragmatists. And it's whatever works gets bolted on. Well that's I think Paul refers to that as worldly wisdom. And so that will corrode and corrupt the church over time. Um, the other way that I think we can approach is say, well, we've got nothing to learn from that. We can't at all uh, uh, learn from best practices and best principles about how to make a community, how to make a body of people actually function in a healthy way. And my conviction is that when you have a well-grounded biblical epistemology, if you have developed a good exegetical systematic theology that is well informed by the history of the church in theology, um, you should be able to develop a good filter where you can then look at the borrowed capital of wisdom uh, that is in the best practices of the, of the best leadership theory. And if you've got a well-developed filter, you can then actually begin to read that literature, uh, look at those examples historically and um, and then to be able to say, how can that help me 
uh, operationalize what I already know to be biblical wisdom. So in other words, we're working from biblical precept. And where that, what you've asked about becomes useful is when it helps me operationalize, put into practice that which I by conviction understand to be biblical. Does that make sense? Yep. And so to be a, a, a preacher who's a leader, uh, maybe you could say a few more words about this. You need to preach well. Mm-hmm. You need to preach the Word of God Amen. well. Uh, what, what can you say about, about that task? In, in brief in brief scope here. In brief scope. Well, I think um, one of the comments I'll make in the book is that because the preacher is a leader and he leads through preaching, that he needs to give the best and the bulk of his time to the preparation and delivery of sermons. That's how you lead. And when what I envision, and I think you share this, when the pastor is giving the best and bulk of his time to that, He is doing his exegetical work. He's reflecting in a biblical theological way. He's uh, looking at the systematics issues, the whole counsel of God. He has the voices of the history of the church in his ear and in his heart. So he's doing exegetical theological work, which results in Christ-centered exposition empowered by the Holy Spirit as he preaches. And so that... um, the, the preaching that we envision doing this is nothing other than what we always talk about in the Reformed tradition. It is preaching the whole counsel of God. The text, as Kent Hughes used to teach us, the text is sovereign because the God of the text is sovereign. And so I, what I'm committed to and what we train people in and what I think lies behind uh, the principles in this book is Christ-centered exposition is what leads the church. And so this, and this is not abstract or ivory tower preaching this is practical preaching that's not just uh, so wrapped up let's say in theological speculation this is biblical teaching that has relevance for where people are yeah i think one way to look at what we're talking about is it's an it's an aspect of application and preaching and um, i think what we're talking about is showing people in an organic way how what you're getting out of the text lands in their life and how it causes them to respond to Christ through faith and repentance. And that faith and repentance causes them to obey what the Word of God prescribes. So therefore, it leads to transformation in individuals. And when individuals are being transformed, congregations are being transformed. I think the other thing that we try to tease out in the book is that sometimes preachers, when we do think about application, which we must when we do think about application, we're only thinking at an individual level. We're not thinking, how does this transform our whole church? And I think where preaching and leadership really begins to transform a church is when the preacher's thinking about how does what is in the text call our entire church as a system, as a body, as a community to respond to Christ. So yes, preaching, I believe because it is preaching, it is the living God speaking to people and calling them to respond, has to be applied.